Today I've got a really quick tip for you because I think I finally found the best way to do per layer color or shader variations or even modifier variations and that's without mesh duplicates or any other mesh instances. We will basically use layer attributes to pass some custom values to the shader node trees and it also works to drive any driver values. Those specific values can be set in the custom properties panel and I will show you how to fetch those values from any place inside Blender. But first, let's quickly take a look at the other method to do per layer color variations. So here I have a basic model setup, which is an old watch design of mine. And in this project, we'll just do some leather band color variations and a bit of engraving variations on the inside. So obviously, the poorest method to do per layer color variations will be to completely duplicate your model and to deactivate one collection in one layer, activate the other in the other layer, and here you can just set up another material. That isn't particularly good because now you have several objects which aren't linked at all between them. So any modification you will make, you will have to reduplicate everything and reset up everything. It will be a bit better to do a linked duplicate of the collection. So now any change of the mesh will still be propagated into the other collection and the other layer. But it won't account for any new mesh you will add or any kind of heavy modification you will make to your setup. Now the other method that I have been using for the last three years is to use the path index of the objects and the color attribute in the viewport display properties panel. So for example, here if I just set, up, set it up quickly on the leather bracelet, you can get the object info and just plug the color inside it. So now, if you go to the, to the viewport display of the object properties panel, you can change the color of this object and it also works with collection instances. You can even use another properties, which is in the relations panel, and it's called the path index, to switch between different textures. So here, for example, in my body material, I have two different textures with different patterns, and I can switch between them by calling the object info node again, and this time I plug in the object index. Now, if I switch the path index of the object, I can switch between them. Once everything is set up, I can just call an instance of my collection. So this setup will properly get all the modification you will do to your base mesh and anything in the base collection. So now you can set one custom color for all your collection instance, but the path index doesn't work anymore. That's a quick fix. If you go back in your source collection, you just need to replace this object index with an attribute node and just call it path underscore index and you also need to call it from the instancer. Now, if I go back to my collection instance, I can use the path index to switch between the different textures. So with this setup, I can have two different variables, a color and an integer value to switch different between different textures, which can be pretty nice for most projects because you can get a lot of different variations on render layers. So I just have to duplicate this collection instance on different render layers. And as I said, any change you make in the source collection will properly propagate into the other collections. So that's pretty nice regarding the memory. The two main drawbacks of this solution are that first, you only have two variables, the color of the object and one integer value to switch between textures. And the layer setup is still pretty long because you need to duplicate the collection instance, put it in the collection and hide it from the layer you are currently working on. So if you want to add a new layer at some point, you will have to go back to all the other layers to hide the collection you just added, so that in each view layer, you only have one collection active. Now I will show you my new method, which is way more flexible because you just need to have one object in your scene and you can just pass some values from the view layer properties to any objects in the scene. And the setup is pretty simple. First, let's set up a basic color choice from the layer on my leather bracelet. I can remove my uh, object color info and first I will add the color ramp so I can pick between a few different colors. Just setting it to constant, I will put, let's say, four different colors. You can adjust the position by entering values so it's a bit more precise. And let's say I want a black, a red, blue, and maybe a bit of a brown desaturated value. How to say to Blender that you want to choose between some different colors on any different layer. On the view layer properties panel, you can scroll all the way to the bottom and open the custom properties tab. 
Here you can click on new and add the new properties. I'm just calling it leather underscore color. You can already set it to maybe integer and just uh, make the value quite high so you have a bit of headroom. I can really simply call this value by adding an attribute node, setting my, my name as I just set it up. So leather underscore color and just call it from the view layer. One other thing we need to do, because with the color ramp we are clamped from 0 to 1, we just need to add a math node to divide the value by the number of colors. So now if you change your leather color property in the view layer, you can switch between those different values. And I can just show you really quickly that this value is layer dependent. So if I duplicate the settings of this layer to a new layer, for example, I will rename it blue, and I just choose the layer color to have my blue uh, band. I'm going back to the first one. And here I have a different value that is already set. So now, as you can see, I only have one object in my scene, not even instances, but it also works with object instances or even linked collection from other scenes. You can really quickly switch between different values of this setup that way. You just need to know that if you add a new custom properties on this layer, it will not appear on the other layers. So it's best to set up everything on one layer, add all the properties you want, and rename them properly, do all the setup and everything, and then create new layers by clicking on copy settings. That way, all your properties are present on all the layers. Now, really quickly, we'll continue the setup to show you how to switch between different textures. On my watch body, on which I have the two different textures and shaders, I'm just changing my previous attribute, which was the path index from the instancer, to the view layer, and I'm adding a new property to the layer. I'm just calling it body variation. Here, I will only have two different values, and if I put it into the attribute node, set to view layer, you can see that I can choose between the different body variation on my layer. Now to expand this setup with different layers, I can just call this one, for example, red and stripes. Copy the settings. On this one, I want, let's say, blue and rings. So I can just set that into the properties. And that way you can add a lot of new layers with all the properties you want. Here I just quickly set up for the outside leather color, but of course you can set it on all the textures you want. Or you could even just take everything here, which manages your band colors, add it to a group, and propagate it to the other leather colors. Because of the way it's implemented in Blender, it might not always update really quickly. But once you launch a render, it will always be the right value. A final setup which I will quickly show you is how to get the view layer properties as we just set them up, but from any driver. That way you can drive any modifier or something else. For example here, I'm, I'm going to use this value to drive a simple deform modifier and have some different twist values on each layer. On the view layer properties, I can add a new property. Call it, for example, twist amount. I'm going from, let's say, minus pi to pi. So now to get this value inside the driver, you just need on your modifier to add a new driver. And to get your properties, you just need to type depth graph dot view underscore layer and inside brackets and quotes you need to put the name of your properties which for me is twist underscore amount that way you can drive any value inside blender which allows for driver from a specific render layer and if the value doesn't update right away you just need to move around your object or inside the edit driver button, you can click on update dependencies. 
but remember that, we, that it will always auto-update when you launch a render or an animation, so it shouldn't be too much trouble. And to properly use those render layers and export them for animation, you can go to the Compositing tab, click on Use Nodes, and then you can add a File Output node and duplicate the Render Layers node. Here you can choose all of your layers and input them one by one into the File Output node to set some things. Which you can do for any number of inputs you want. Also, one final tip is if you want to switch between, for example, more than two shaders, textures, or anything, you can just set up a very simple multiple mix node this way. You can add an array of mix nodes by always putting the previous value into the A input. And here, for example, if I set some different values, let's say V or 0.5, 1, and for example, 0.75, I can drive everything with a single value that I can plug into all the factors. And it will only properly work if I add some math nodes and I subtract the index of the mix node. So for example, for the first one, we don't need to subtract anything, but for the second, I can subtract one. And here, which because I only have three nodes, I can also subtract two. And now I can really quickly see how it works, which I can show you even better with some colors. Here, I will blend between red blue, green, and yellow. So 0 is red, 1 is blue, 2 is green, and 3 is yellow. This way you can really easily set up multi-stage mix nodes and use everything we just learned here to, go to switch between any number of colors, shaders, textures you want. Now with all of this, I think it's pretty nuts nice how flexible you can get on per layer render settings and I hope it will be useful to some of you to render huge batches of color variations, shader variations or even modifier variations for your clients.